What's up guys, it's your man Plop. Um, I just wanted to go over some basics uh, when it comes to technical analysis, uh, in this instance being drawing support and resistance lines. I think it's a very crucial thing to learn and I, I think that many traders, especially when you're newer, they don't really um, realize how important or how crucial it is when it comes to making uh, decisions in trading. Uh, I myself used to think it was pretty corny, like I was almost too good to use supports and resistance until I started using it and you know it's just uh, just something you guys should really take serious and I'm going to be going over it with two examples and my examples are going to be BFRI and PHUN. Um, so for the BFRI I'm going to start by looking at the four hour chart. Uh, when you are looking through your time frames you want to kind of learn the ones you like. I personally go through all of them. I like to use four hours for longer swings and 15 minutes for for short, you know, day trades and things like that. Uh, I'll use one minute supports and five minute supports as well, but they're nowhere near as reliable as the time frames that are wider, um, simply because the price action hasn't really proven itself in those areas yet. But uh, we'll go into that in a bit, and I'll just go over that really quick. So. First, I'm going to start at the four hour chart. Uh, overall, I, I hear a lot of traders uh, when I, they do talk about support and resistance, many do favor the four hour. So I would recommend starting here. And you want to look at a critical spot that um, the price action keeps bouncing off of. So whether it's up or down. And if I'm looking here and I count some key areas, you can kind of see as I'm moving this line up and down, we got a dip here we have a gap up that starts right here and we have a candle that touches up here which all kind of touches this line right here when it comes to drawing supported resistance i would personally go for a minimum of three very rarely do i do i go off uh, a, a supported resistance that um only touches it uh the line less than three times unless maybe it's a on the one minute during a day trade and i'm doing a quick scalp with a very tight stop loss you know it really depends on your trading style but as you learn these uh technical skills you'll be able to apply that in ways you like that's through your personality so i'm gonna go ahead and draw a a uh, price level i think it's good right around here the reason I picked here is because if you see right here, we got one touch, two touches, and three touches. That I'm going to credit as a good support and resistance. I want to point out that I can't go more to the left because this is a fairly new company. And um, these, when it comes to situations like this, obviously because there's less times that this critical level has been shown to be a support and resistance, it's not as reliable, but I think that this is still the best we can get in terms of where we could rely on some good uh, bounces or uh, just to make plays in general. Uh, this is, I'm gonna work with this, I like it, it's what we got, and we can even look at other uh, time frames to validate it. If you look at the one hour, it almost perfectly taps it and just, just jumps right back up. Even right here, it taps this little wick right here and goes right back down. Taps it and goes right back up. This is this is a good this is a good level. I like it. I like it right here. You zoom up, and you can just uh, do that by going through your your time frames. Uh, you also don't want to just go off one. You want to draw multiple. So let's go ahead and try twice here. Uh, let's let's draw another support or resistance over here. Mm, I like right here. One, two, three. That's another support. So if this support gets broken, I would m personally most likely favor hopping out until I could look for an entry in this area. Because why would I walk it down to this price range if I'm buying up here? It's essentially you're kind of just gambling at that point just waiting for uh, a new pattern to set up i'd rather 
get out when your support is broken and wait for a new pattern or a new nice dip to form to jump right back in. But that's another support line. And then we got another one here. Uh, it's not as good, but it's something. We got one, two, three. We got one right here. That's four wicks right there. That's a good one. And you can just go through that, through all the time frames, and just use the ones that you really like. I like the one hour ones, those work as well. And I would, I will most likely be using um, some of these uh, support and trends that I'm drawing. But uh, like I said before, the further out the time frame, the more reliable it is because you can see just more examples. So we're gonna move on over to the PHUN stock. And we're going to do the same thing. And since we have more room, I'm thinking that we will be able to make a better example out of it. So this is the four hour for PHUN. It looks pretty crazy, but we can still use it. Right off the bat, if you look, you can see a very clear and easy one right here. It's almost pretty perfect. I'm, I'm going to draw right there. That's one, two, three, four. That's a good area. And look how well it bounces off. We got another one right here. I like that one, two, three, four. That's a nice little key area. And then I'll draw one in case this breaks. I'll draw another relevant one somewhere around here. I like it right here. I see one, two, three little key areas where it's bouncing off of. And I'm going to zoom in just so we can take a better look like last time, see if we want to adjust any lines. Um, that works perfectly i like this if you look over here it is touching these little these tops the ones we drew earlier and it's slowing down around the resistance that we also drew earlier uh you also want to look at how these lines work so if you look here clearly it's it's been rejecting it a couple times but there are some stocks or some plays where you'll see a support or resistance line working better as support or resistance. That's a very good thing to keep in mind because you don't want to rely very heavily on a support that works a lot, that's worked a lot better as a resistance in the past um, because you know it might just break down uh, if if there's not it, there's just it, there's just not much as much confident as confidence as a support that's been used a lot as support. So um, there's a this one right here, I think it could use some adjusting. I'm gonna move this one down a little. Mm, right there, that's better, that's better. It's more like in the middle, yeah. yeah let's go, one, two. Yep, and uh, like I said, this company is also kinda new, so can't really go back and, and keep doing it, but the more supports, I mean, the more bounces you can identify and draw lines off of, the better it is for your, for your, the accuracy of your support and the resistance line. So, um, for day traders, I'm going to shift more over into the day trading. Uh, if if you're day trading, you can apply the same technique. However, it's a lot quicker. I like to think of it as, you know, in in the shows where when you're when when they see the a little planet or something and a, a hundred years went by but you know it's still only been one day on earth it's it's almost like that i know that's an extreme analogy but everything's just a lot faster pace as you zoom in for example what what i like to do what i would do in this instant is i would maybe and this is a lesson for another time i'm just going to do it right now very quickly i would draw a support right here and you know, same way you would on a four hour chart, except it's a lot less reliable. So you want to place stop losses a lot closer when it comes to these uh, because day trades are so volatile and have that funky movement. Um, it's very uh, 
it's very um, important to know what you're willing to risk when going off uh, supports and resistances on the smaller charts like the one minute and the five minute. But for now, I just wanted to go over how you can use some support and resistance lines to make some good decisions and plays or when you're uh, buying dips and the dip starts slowing down. Supports are the best places to buy, in my opinion. It's the strongest indicator when, uh, in my opinion, it's a, in my trading technique, it's one of the strongest uh, indicators when a drop is falling and then it starts bouncing at a resistance along with a bunch of un other indicators. But again, convergence is a, is a lesson for another time. Uh, and that's really all I got for support and resistance. I really hope that helped you guys out. If you guys uh, like this video, let me know. Let me know if there's any questions you got or anything you'd like me to go over, and I'd be happy to help. Thanks for watching, guys, and I really hope this helps. Y'all have a good one.